suck your energy, and it's just like you really gotta just keep in mind and be mindful and be selective right. on who you allow to make like, Yes. And it doesn't mean you gotta cut them off. Right. You just gotta know when and where to have them around. Yes. And just like keep them at a distance. Cause you know, we all need each other for whatever it is. Like it's not using people, it's just more that someone might be able to do something. But whoever they are personally may not work for you. So just knowing like, okay, I just need you to create this flyer for me. That doesn't mean you gotta be around me every day, all day, and I gotta hear all about your, you know, personal business, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Just make this flyer and that's what it is. And this goes back to what Charlemagne said. How many people believe hurt people hurt people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah? And no, do you believe that you've hurt people because you've been upset? Like, you've been in your miserable and you've got... You're shaking your head, no. You never wanted company with your misery? I hurt people because you did Okay. <laughs> that's hurting people. Okay, that's hurting people. You're not supposed to get even. <laughs> Just but, the one. Uh, go, get it back to what just that one. But get it back to what you said. Um, when you're, especially in your occupation, yeah. Certain occupations, you just come into contact with so many people that you can't pick and choose who you're going to come in contact with. And if you have a positive light and a positive energy, you will always have people drawn to you. Yeah. And most of the people that are drawn to you are people in need, right? Yeah. So, for that reason, many times I have to, I wouldn't say insulate myself, but I have to keep my energy up within me. So it's almost like it's spinning within me, and I have to keep it inside. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna let this out right now. I gotta keep it inside. Because what this person is bringing to me, Mm -hmm. if I release my energy, I'm gonna be empty. Right. So I have to keep it moving, and I'm like, "Mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can't always push that person away, right? It might be the person you're interviewing for your job, or it might be even a family member that is at Thanksgiving and they sit next to you and you're like, why did aunt such and such put me next to this person? Yeah. Like, you can't always get away from the person, but you have to learn to live within yourself. Yeah. To For the time that you're around that person, that you're not taking in their stuff. Right. Honestly, I like the whole thing that you said about emptying out because coming back to New York, being in California for about a year and a half, coming back here, I felt like I was pouring out into everybody, helping everybody, doing this, doing that, to the point where I became empty and I was irritable, I was aggravated. My mother even called me and was like, I need you to go over there, don't come home because she, I actually told my mom to shut up the other day and yeah, you see your face? My mom was about to throw me out. <laughs> like, yeah, you, it, that energy is just like I absorbed everybody else's energy. And I was trying to help everybody else out. But the thing is that I, I forgot that I was on empty. And I forgot how to replenish myself. Because I was doing it by myself. But then I was like, damn. I never trained myself how to do it while everybody else was still around. And that's something that I'm realizing. New York has that energy where it's like always up here. So then if you can't control this, if you can't handle this, you're going to die. Like, like you're done. Like, sincerely. So, like, New York has an effect, but I also think it's just, like, the nature of Like, the energy feels, like, so dark and dark. Like, it's just, like, the outside influences of, like, the people around you. Yeah. It's also about what you're consuming. Like, what you're feeding yourself. Literally. Mm-hmm. You're Social media. Yeah. Social media is, like, a drug. Yeah. I was just posting selfies. Not even paying attention. Like, <laughs> let me protect my energy and get involved because you will really distract yourself. From mm-hmm. And I remember, like, I had a conversation with my mother a few weeks ago, and um, she was like, you know, when I was in school or when I was growing up, and something that happened, like, you know, you would hear about it, and everybody would just like, that was yeah, that was the day. end of it. But she's like, you guys, like, your generation. You have information being 
thrown at you. You watch people get shot every day. You watch people get beat up every day. Like it's a pastime. You can go to War Star and see violence. Like you know what I'm saying? So imagine that. That's what you're feeding your brain. Yeah. So not only are we desensitized, but we're also desensitized to our own feelings. Yeah. So it's like it's very problematic. Like not even problematic, but it's very it's crucial for us to like know ourselves, like yeah. understand ourselves. And be more honest with our own sensitive, sensitivity, and I think that's a, that's where we get to protecting our energy and realizing like what it is you're willing to tolerate. Because for me, those those uh, stories of like this person got shot, this person was beat up. I can watch those things because I'm neither like, do I. I start crying. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> where's this world coming through? Yeah, like it's a lot. Like, but I, do you think? Depression, because a lot of people it does kill themselves because of you because know. we don't even know how to process. That. Yeah, like, all this pressures now more than ever. You have like a ton of pressure. Like you're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be doing that because you gotta be glamorous. You gotta yeah, have, you gotta have yeah, this yeah, look. You, you gotta to act this way. Like every other month, you need to be making six figures right. yesterday. <laughs> you need to. do is I also recommend to everybody is first thing you do it when we wake up in the morning we're quick to grab our phones we're quick to like look at our the post the picture we put up yesterday how many likes it got like one thing I've been doing when I was in California I would charge my phone in the other room and go to sleep so when I wake up in the morning first thing I do I think about meditating or praying so those are the first things I do. And honestly, that it changes your world, whether you believe it or not. It actually changes the dynamic of your entire day. Because if your, room is, if your phone's in the other room, the first thing you're not opening your phone to and opening your eyes to is bad news. Because if you didn't get the amount of likes that you wanted, that settles on you, whether you believe it or not. Or other people. Or other people, or that work. You get that email, you get that text message where that person sent you at 1 a.m. and then you decide to check it the first thing in the morning. It kills your whole entire day. Think about when you're in a relationship. Yeah, if you're in a relationship, you go through your boyfriend's phone, that one text message kills your whole entire day. So, um, <laughs> so like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, there's just certain things where we as, I wouldn't say we're millennials, we're Gen Z's because millennials are, it's like my niece. So us as Gen Z's need to like break apart from the things that are going on in this society nowadays. And one thing we were gonna go into is about having faith. How many people believe in God? Going to church more. Because the church is actually dying. Because a lot of us are not going to church. But the thing is a lot of us are now claiming that we're not religious. We're spiritual, yeah, it's not religious. Like, I'll my own time, I'll do what I want. Like, we have become so individualistic, and it started in the 80s with, like, um, with, with the whole grand scheme of, like, a person becoming a brand. I firmly believe that Madonna started this whole, like, look at me, I am the... Yeah, the I am. Mm -hmm. With her, her performance in 1984 of I'm a Virgin, everybody's like, yo, what is this woman doing? And, like, creating a brand of mm -hmm. herself. It started way back then, and now it's like taking a whole other form with social media. Now we have people who have it on. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, like, so. Who are these people? You know, we so. Um, it's about your spirituality. Uh, everyone has their own exactly. chakras so and stones yeah, and all of that. <laughs> word, but it's like, uh, we haven't created a community of like, hey, yeah, we're spiritual beings, but yeah. like, where's the guy that's coming from? We have to tell him I completely understand how the church is dying. But it's also the church can go 
exposes a lot of things on people's life that aren't congruent with what so, I actually want to share a story with you guys. Well, like, not even my family even know this happened. So, oh, this week. <laughs> Mama just tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> this week, a friend of mine, um, they had left something with me, and I went to drop it off. They told me to meet them at this place, not knowing it was a church. Now, mind you, I have not been to the church, to a church since I was maybe like 13, 14. And they was like, so you want to come inside? We're doing um, Bible study right now. And I mean, we had conversations of me possibly going back to church and stuff like that, but I just had my own views on it. So I was shaking. I'm like, no, I got to do this. And I'm like, I really don't got to do anything. And I was like, okay. So I went inside. They asked me to fill out this form, and I'm like, do I have to? I was just like questioning everything. <laughs> like, do I have to fill out this form? They was like, yes, just put your name, da da da. So I go inside. They um, was like, oh, we have a new visitor, new person. I'm like, oh crap. Like, I was not expecting this. Mind you, I had a crop top on, my belly was all out, cut up jeans and everything. I was not expecting to go in. And the pastor, she had spoke so much. She did a word on me, and she was just saying so much positive things and things that I was actually going to going through. And I'm just like, whoa. But the fact that I was shaking, and I'm just like the whole time, I'm like, I need to get out of here. Like while they're doing their Bible study, I'm texting people, like you know, trying to get them to get me out. So I'm like, you know, maybe I gotta go do this call real quick. Or and I'm just like, why am I feeling this? Why am I shaking? Why am I this? Now, mind you, I have faith in God. I believe in God. But I think um, they actually gave me a book that I just finished reading today. And they address all these things that we were saying, like how the church, is, you know, they have these expectations from you and stuff like that. But I think now it's more of just finding the right church for you. Yeah, that's all it is. And so, like, I'm honestly kind of considering of possibly going to this church just to see what they're offering. Now, mind you, my mom, she's a part of a church. Clap it up. She, it took her a minute to get me to even go. Like, I'm still not even trying to, like, go, you know. Yep. No offense to that particular church. <laughs> not trying to go to that one. But it's just the fact that you just got to find the right church that is for you. And understanding. She had something to say. was because I was going through a really downward spiral in my life in California where my I just saw nothing right, like nothing was going right at all. Same issue where you walked into a church. I walked in, I actually went to a YouTube event and a white lady came up to me and was like, oh, I need you to come to my church. And I was like, nah, I'm good, thank you. But then it turned out to be like an all black people church. And it was just like that church that you see on TV. That's the church I go to. So I was so shocked. And she's in the choir. I was like, this white woman's in the choir? Like, this is real. So when I went to that church, it's like from that point forward, my life just, like, I cried. I walked up to the altar. I would never do that stuff. I am like, not, I'm not about that religious stuff. But being able to do all of that and then, like, finding my journey and being able to start this podcast and now being on iHeart, Spotify, and all of that, this is the stuff that, like, 
This is the stuff that people want to talk about but do not have an outlet or do not have somebody being able to talk about it with them because they feel like, oh, if I talk about religion or if I talk about God, it's a little too much. No one's going to listen to me. No one's going to talk to me. Well, I'm here. Dear Q Talk is here. Yes. Thank you. So I actually, you know, appreciate Q so much. Because we're, what we say, we're spirit sisters. Spirit sisters. Like, we really be on the same, same line, way. wave, like, everything just, we just be on point. And it's so weird because I met her a few years ago. She came to one of my concerts that I had. And it wasn't honestly until, like, last year that we really, like, bonded. But um, I appreciate her so much for creating this opportunity and this platform for, you know, us to do this podcast. And we're hoping to do it more often. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys tell everybody about this because we want to continue doing this, allowing people to unleash, unleash and release. I can't talk. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> but I actually want to know, is there anything that you guys want to release and unleash today? It's just us. It's not like a big crowd, which I think was perfect. Perfect. Um, is there anything that you guys want to just get off your mind and just move forward in a different way? Any topic we didn't touch on? That you think it can be should. quick. It doesn't have to be like a whole like big paragraph. Just something really quick. One word. Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> okay. Rated PG. I mean, rated R. Those size matter. Oh. Okay. Oh, we can okay. talk about that next time. What's another thing? Uh, <laughs> huh? Sexuality. Okay. It's so fluid, yeah. It's so fluid, and then, like, the sensitivity. I, I think, like, the intelligence, the sensitivity, AI, elementary, and the CPL. Yeah, right? All different things. There's so, like, talk about, like, we can talk about that. Okay. What all of these mean, all these letters that I have to Yeah. And, like, why they have to well, one thing I do on my podcast, if you guys listen to it, um, it's called Dear Q Talks because my podcast is more of a diary entry. So if you guys ever want to come on Dear Q Talks, you, it's literally a diary entry where you will say Dear Q Talks and you vent out. You just vent whatever it is that you want to vent and then you go sincerely. You don't have to say your name. No one needs to know it's you. It's all anonymous. So if you listen to my podcast, there's a lot of people that vent out about things and even cried about things. And no one knows it's them. I just want for black women to understand that it really doesn't matter what shade you are. Yes. You should be happy with me. You know, like, it's not a comparison game. It's not how many drops, how light, how dark, where you are in between. The struggle is real, regardless of what color you are. But you have to learn how to be happy within yourself, regardless of what the world says about us, in order for us to be happy within the world. Yes. Thank you. Clap it up. All right, you guys. So give us a few minutes. We're going to get our performance performance ready. So yes, once again, we're going to have Army and Bitso perform off of their latest album, Therapy Session. So don't go anywhere. Thanks for coming. All right.